I'm showing you clips of the genes before and after alterations. Can you guess which one is which? Well, the one on the right is the altered version. If this was hard for you to pick, then we have done our job well and will teach you how to perfectly take in the waste on your jeans and make it look brand new. So you're going to need a thread that matches the one on your jeans. You will need size 16 or 18 sewing machine needles. You're going to need some pins, a seam ripper, some clippers, regular scissors, a straight ruler, some fabric chalk, a curved ruler, and a razor blade. So here is the plan. We have our jeans here and we're going to begin by removing a portion of the belt loop. Then we're going to work on detaching the waistband around the back. And now we can completely remove the belt loop. Then we're going to loosen up the seams, add our measurements, and sew it smaller to perfection. This is the plan in a nutshell. And now we can begin with the step-by-step -step details. So here I have my chalk and I usually just write how much the customer wants taken off so I don't forget. Today we're taking off one inch. So next we are going to remove the label. I'm grabbing my razor blade to do this, but this has to be done extremely lightly and carefully because if I press too hard, I will damage the material underneath. This can also be done with a seam ripper if you want a little bit more control. So go ahead and remove the label completely. And then I always pin this onto the jeans so that I don't lose it. Okay, so now I'm going to start to lightly shave off the thread that exists in the inner behind portion in order to weaken that seam. Then I'm moving up to the uppermost inner seam and I'm also lightly shaving it. Then I'm flipping the jeans over and I'm going to shave the top part of the belt loop. Now I'm still working with the top part of the belt loop, but I'm going in from behind to remove it. So now with the bottom of the belt loop, do not try to remove it from the superior side. Instead, go in from behind. And now you can start to lightly shave it until it becomes weak enough so that you can pop it open like this. Now I'm flipping the jeans over and I'm gonna grab my seam ripper and I'm gonna remove some of the threads starting from slightly adjacent to the middle. Then I'm doing the same on the back side of the jeans as shown here. Then I'm grabbing the thread and gently tugging it, but I'm only really focused on the middle back part, so there's no need to pull hard at all. Now you can just cut it off. And now this is the part where we can sort of peel the waistband off. Cool, huh? So here I'm removing some more of the thread along the top inner line. I decided to do this twice because I really want to avoid pulling too hard and having the entire seam come off. Now that the waistband is dismantled, we can now finally remove the belt loop going in from the underside again, and I also pin this to the jeans so that I don't lose it later on. Next, I'm grabbing my chalk and I'm making a tiny line where I think the middle is on the bottom. Then I'm grabbing the two belt loops on each side and I'm joining them like this. And then I'm squeezing this middle part and I'm going to draw another little tick at the top. So then I'm going to lay my jeans down flat and with a straight ruler, I'm just going to connect these dots. And then I'm going to take my big scissors and cut along this line. So on the inner side of the jeans, you can rip and pull those big seams towards the top. I'm just finishing the job here. Then you're going to lift that flap up and use some pins to secure it. So the reason that it's really important to secure that flap with some jeans is that jeans are made in a special way by a machine. It works by starting out with two pieces of fabric, one for each butt cheek, and one piece gets folded like this and the other gets folded like that. So then the machine kind of interlocks them in this manner and can go on to sew them together. The machine is so powerful that it even makes both lines at the same time. And this is what it's called a flat fell stitch. 
And that's why it's so fast and easy for big companies to mass produce jeans. Anyway, when we instruct you to open up the seam, lift up the flap, and then secure it with pins, it's because if it's not secured, the pieces can open up like this. And once they detach, you lose the original placement of the seam and you also lose the symmetry. So definitely use pins. Here, I just flip the jeans over and I'm removing the thread along the line as shown. Okay, I can now finally begin to measure. As I mentioned before, I have to take off one inch overall. So what I do is I mark half an inch on each side because eventually they'll add up to one inch overall. Then I grab my ruler and I'm making little dashes from the half inch point I just made to the original seam in the lower butt area with a diagonal line. And then eventually I'm going to take my curved ruler so I can connect all those dots and have a nice line for me to work with. All right, so now moving on over to my sewing machine. And the first thing we want to do is to match up these two horizontal lines. So this is the most challenging part because there's so much material that it tends to move when you try to sew through it. The way to perfectly align them is to place one pin right under the line and another pin right on top. Then I'm going to carefully place the pants under the sewing machine while the foot is raised. Then I'll drop the foot and I'm going to let the needle penetrate in between the horizontal lines. So I'm going to aim for that black dot in the picture. Now I'm just making two or three little stitches down along the chalk marks we made. And then I'm going to take the pants and just double check if everything is perfectly aligned. Great. Now that we have met the qualifications, we are going to stitch the whole line that we previously marked. If you want more control and stability when sewing, you can add some pins as I did here and just remove them as you sew. The material is now secure so I can remove my handy pins and here I am straightening out the excess material. This is called the seam allowance but I'm not going to cut too much in case my customer ever wants me to make the waistband a little bigger again. This will be the only difference from the original pants and although it doesn't show as you know now, it's up to you how much seam allowance you want to have available. I now took my pants over to the ironing board and I'm taking my iron to flatten out the seam allowance. Then I'm going to do a mechanism that mimics the flat fell stitch I did earlier. So to do this, I'm making one fold over like this. Then I'm going to iron that nice and flat. And then I will fold it over again like this and iron that as well. This is an optional step, but I'm just going to sew the folded seam allowance because I have a lot of excess material. That way, when I make the top stitch next, it's going to stay in place. Next, I flip the jeans over and I'm going to work on making the nice top stitch. The first stitch I will make is going to be around 1 16th inch away from the big seam that you'll see when you flip it over. The stitch you will make happens to be on top of the seam allowance, which may be to the left of the seam or to the right, depending on the factory in which the jeans were made. So make sure to check where your seam allowance is before you sew. Something that's really important to note as well is the length of stitch setting on your sewing machine. You can adjust this and it will change how closely the little stitches are together. So just find a setting that matches the length of stitch on your jeans so that everything flows smoothly. So I finished the first long seam and I lifted up the foot, rotated the jeans and moved one fourth inch over. So now I'm going to make my second long seam towards the top of the jeans.
Now we are sewing back the waistband, so make sure to clean off all the little stray threads. Next, I'm going to mark half an inch on the inside of the waistband. Here I'm placing the two right sides of the waistband together so that the wrong sides are facing outwards. And I'm making sure that the two edges where the waistband folded together originally align together perfectly. I will also make sure that the original stitches align as well. This is absolutely crucial for a flawless finish. I'm just going to secure that here with some pins and then I'm going to make sure that everything else aligns perfectly as well. Now I'm going to sew the waistband and just remove the pins as I go along. Notice how nice it's looking so far? So I'm just quickly ironing this. Now I'm going to put my label back. Some people don't even bother doing this because labels can be a little uncomfortable, so it's totally up to you. And next I'm going to sew the middle loop back on in the center of the two stitches. I'm going to make a top stitch at the top of the waistband. Then I'm going to sew the waistband, but I'm just reassuring that everything is flat underneath. And finally, I'm going to sew the top of the loop back on. Because it's so thick, I flattened the belt loop with a hammer. A rubber hammer works better, by the way. And now I'm just going to go back and forth and back and forth to reinforce it and make this belt loop super sturdy. And we are finally done. I'm just ironing it so it looks sleek. So here is the final product. As you can see, it looks great. The only difference is the seam allowance as mentioned earlier to allow for future alterations if needed. So here again, we have our before and after. Freaky, right? <laughs> That's our waist tutorial. Don't forget to subscribe. Bye.